See, if these radical ideas are just open-mindedness, well, then, then where, where are all the other ideas on the other side of things? How come the academics aren't wondering what a country with no government regulation would look like or, or very limited government regulation? It, it always seems to be a radical, progressive, giant, I mean, Mao kind of state. I, I want to see if we can put this together here. Just, just, we're looking for a group of people, I think we have it, who think there's a threat to the earth. We, uh, we have it. They, they're all global warming people. They believe rich countries are the problem. We have that. Collapse the system. They're doing it. And control. Let's see if we can put this together. First of all, global governance. And I'm just going to use just the ones that you've probably seen before. But again, we're laying the foundation of something that you will not believe. <sighs> global government. Here is Andy Stern. Watch. We created global trade, we created global finance, we created global companies, but we forgot to create a global government, or a global organization, or global regulators, as Sakarsi is talking about now. And I, I would happen to be at Davos, and I, I would say they're going to rename this year's Davos as the revenge of the countries over the companies. Because all of a sudden we realize we let global capitalism run amok, and we need global regulation, and today we began the process in London of actually putting in place those regulations. Okay, so... We have a union guy talking. I mean, the unions used to fight against other countries in the labor. I mean, now they're fighting for global government. Okay. Marie Strong. This is the guy who we've introduced you to who is UN Central. I mean, this, this guy, look him up. Spooky dude. Marie Strong wrote this introduction to a book in 1991, Global Government. This interlocking is the new reality of the century with profound implications for the shape of our institutions of governance, national and international, beyond interdependence. Beyond, what is beyond interdependence? What is it? He also says by the year 2012, these changes must be fully integrated into our economic and political life. Why by 2012? And he said that in 1991. The global governance advocates seem to settle on achieving their ends through environmentalism. Environmentalism, remember, and we've got almost everybody we find is into global government. I mean, the Glo Clinton Global Initiative, all of it, all of it is global now. Now, they might say that this is a conspiracy theory because you're talking about a global government, but listen to the overwhelming evidence, listen to any of them. They're all talking about global currency, glo global governance. Well, who runs it? Who runs it? Maurice Strong on environmentalism, because that's the next thing, you gotta, have, you gotta have a threat to the earth. He said this, the real goal of the earth charter is the fact, in fact, it will become like the Ten Commandments. He also said this, watch. I can say that if we continue on our present uh, uh, trends, on our present course, it's very likely that in many parts of the world this will be the case. In fact, we have begun to see it in many areas. Now, licenses to have babies, incidentally, is, is uh, something that uh, uh, I got in trouble for some uh, years ago for uh, suggesting, even in Canada, that this might be necessary at some point, or some, at least some uh, restriction on the uh, on the uh, right to have a child. I'm not proposing this. I was simply predicting this as a as one of the possible courses that society would have to be uh, uh, would have to seriously consider. Should we get ourselves into this kind of situation? Okay. This is this is Zeke Emanuel's uh, uh, complete live system. Um, this is John Holdren. I mean, this is not a crazy. Now he says, I'm not exactly what Zeke Emanuel said. I'm not proposing this. No, 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 I'm not proposing. I'm just saying in case there is an emergency. So you've got... <laughs> okay, this is... Uh, that's Cass Sunstein. Where's John Holdren? Whoops. We've got John Holdren. John, Holdren's, John Holdren said it as well. Now remember, John Holdren is our science czar. Our science czar. In 1977, John Holdren, in his science textbook floated around population control ideas like 
A government might require only implantation of contraceptive capsule, leaving its removal to the individual's discretion, but requiring reimplantation after childbirth. Okay, that 19, 1977. He said this, and he said this. It's the same story. And they're all cross pollinating here. Again, not asking you to believe it, just explain the odds of this coincidence, okay? Explain the odds. Science are, the earth is on fire. We've got to do whatever we have to. If we ever get to that point, we'll have to sterilize people or forced abortions. Same thing. Neither of them are proposing it, but just in case. And, and, and they also, well, look at this. They also believe in the redistribution of wealth. Let's go there because that's the next one. There's a threat, small group of people that believe there's a threat to the earth and the rich countries are the problem, okay? And they got to collapse the system. We already know what they're doing. They're spending money, billions of dollars globally. Globally, you and I know the grease thing's not going to work. The market knows the grease thing's not going to work. Why would we spend a trillion dollars? Why? Why is Fannie and Freddie, why does, why does Fannie and Freddie now have an open door to spending? Nobody even asks us anymore. They can spend whatever they want. Why? Let's go on redistribution of wealth. Here's Andy Stern. He's now on Obama's board of fiscal advisors. Listen to what he says about redistribution of wealth. The government has a major opportunity uh, to distribute wealth through the EITC, through tax policies, through minimum wages, through living wages. The government has a role in distributing wealth or social benefits like Medicare, Medicaid, children's health insurance. There are opportunities in America to share better in the wealth, to rebalance the power, and unions and government are part of the solution. Workers of the world unite, okay? Understand that we're not talking about giving, taking my money and giving it to the poor here in America. We are talking about taking, these are a group of people that believe in global government. He himself says workers of the world unite. So it's not just taking the rich man's money and giving it to somebody poor here in America. We're all the richest 10% in the world. If you live here, we all are the richest 10%. How about Obama himself? What does he say about it? It's not that I want to punish your success. I just want to make sure that everybody who is behind you, that they've got a chance at success, too. Everybody's so pinched that business is bad for everybody. And, and I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. And one of the, uh, I think, uh, the tragedies of the civil rights movement was um, because the civil rights movement became so court-focused, uh, I think that there was a tendency to lose track of the political and community organizing and, and activities on the ground that are able to put together the actual coalitions of power through which you bring about redistributive uh, change. Uh, and uh, in some ways, we still suffer from that. Explain that. If you think we're going to keep America as it is, explain just that quote with all of the things that you have seen. Explain it. Have your friends explain it. Okay. So now let's go to the science czar, John Holder. You remember the wants to sterilize in the drinking water, you know, in case. And that, that was just academic. This guy, what did he say about redistribution of wealth? I think ultimately the rate of growth of material consumption is going to have to come down. And there's going to have to be a degree of redistribution of how much we consume in terms of energy and material resources in order to leave room for people who are poor to become uh, more prosperous. Okay, so we have to downgrade. Now, let's go to Marie Strong again, talking about collapsing the economy. I'll show you what he, he wants and the end of, of this story next.